During the reign of King Henry VIII, there were a number of high-profile executions of high-ranking members of the church. John Fisher was a bishop of Rochester, who had been caught between the king and his own beliefs and conscience. Following Henry's break from Rome, he ordered his members of the clergy and friends to swear their allegiance to Henry VIII, but those who refused would dare to cross one of history's most brutal kings. Bishop John Fisher knew the consequences of withdrawing his support for the king's religious changes, and he ultimately paid the price, being beheaded on Tower Hill. So join us today as we look at the brutal execution of John Fisher, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. John Fisher was born in 1469 in Yorkshire, and he was the eldest son of a wealthy merchant. But his father died when he was eight, and his mother remarried and had a number of other children. Fisher went on to study at Cambridge University before he was ordained as a priest in 1491, and he had a number of royal supporters. He was backed by Lady Margaret Beaufort, the mother of King Henry VII, and he became her confessor in 1497, and he convinced her to found Christ College and St John's College at Cambridge University. Fisher was close with Margaret, and after her death he became the Chancellor of Cambridge, and also the Bishop of Rochester. He was seen as a perfect and model bishop at the time, and he was very busy with his own diocese. He went to different churches and also visited and cared for people inside of his land of responsibility. He was an active preacher, who was very enthusiastic, and he was clearly talented. He was even appointed to preach a funeral oration for King Henry VII and Lady Margaret, but despite Fisher's status within the church, he did come into conflict with one of his former pupils, the new King Henry VIII. Problems arose with regards to the money left by Margaret Beaufort for colleges at Cambridge, and the king was jealous of this, believing he was entitled to this money. Fisher was a brilliant scholar, and he alluded to being the author of the Royal Treaty Against Martin Luther and the Criticisms of the Church he published in 1521. Henry VIII, following this work, was then given the title The Defender of the Faith by the Catholic Church, and Fisher preached sermons in cathedrals across the land against Martin Luther and the Reformation. He was staunchly anti-Protestant and ordered the arrests of reformative priests and preachers. Fisher was prospering greatly in Tudor England, and he was in the king's good books, but following Henry VIII's wish to divorce his first wife Catherine of Aragon, things changed massively for him. Fisher was involved in the theological proceedings against Catherine of Aragon, and the king was desperate to have the support of leading writers and also Fisher. Fisher to begin with backed the king, but he came to the conclusion that the king would divorce Catherine of Aragon in order to marry Anne Boleyn, and therefore he would split from Rome. Being a man of his conscience, Fisher went against the king, and Henry became a target of Fisher's preaching. He was an outspoken critic, and Fisher was a strong supporter of Catherine in the proceedings, and wrote letters to support the queen, and also published propaganda in support of her. This was incredibly brave, and he believed deeply that the Pope ruled supreme over the Church, and that to reform the Church should be done only by the Pope, and not the monarchy of a country. In 1531, he refused to accept Henry VIII's title as the supreme head of the Church of England, and refused to acknowledge the act of supremacy later on. He also refused to acknowledge Anne Boleyn as the rightful Queen of England, and he later refused to acknowledge the heirs of Anne and Henry as the rightful ones to the throne, but because of this, he was imprisoned inside the Tower of London. He was held and imprisoned on the 26th of April 1534, and at this time he was an elderly man in his mid-sixties, and he was rather ill. There were attempts to get him to submit and take an oath, but these did not work. Fisher was accused of treason, and things got tougher for him inside the tower, as he was held inside the cold and dark cells within the tower, and he was underfed to get him to give in. He was held inside the Tower of London for over a year, and he was allowed food and drink sent in from friends, and was even allowed a servant, but he was not allowed a personal priest. Fisher was in correspondence with Cromwell about his imprisonment and how harsh things were, but he was caught like a rabbit in the headlights. Richard Rich, a member of court, tried to catch Fisher out, and he asked Fisher for his real opinion, and Fisher admitted that the king was not the supreme head of the Church of England. The Pope was in the process at the time of trying to make Fisher a cardinal as he believed it would save his life and Henry was outraged at this. He said that if the cardinal's hat arrived he would make sure that John Fisher 
had no head left to wear it. On the 17th of June 1535, Bishop John Fisher was tried in front of a jury, made up of Thomas Cromwell, Thomas Boleyn and ten others. Richard Rich testified, and this was deemed enough to sentence Fisher to death, for treason, and he was sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered. But the king then commuted this sentence to beheading, in a small act of mercy. Following his condemnation he said, I think indeed and have always thought, and do now lastly affirm, that his grace cannot justly claim any such supremacy over the church of God. I pray God his grace may remember himself in good time, and hearken to good counsel, for the preservation of himself and his realm. Fisher was then transported back to the Tower of London to await his death sentence. But inside of London there was a great outcry of support for John Fisher. People began to draw comparisons between him and John the Baptist. John the Baptist was executed by King Herod for challenging the validity of Herod's marriage. Henry VIII even considered that this could have been a real thing, and he commuted Fisher's beheading to be done before the 23rd of June, which was John the Baptist's feast day. He feared a riot inside the capital on the day of Fisher's execution. On the 22nd of June 1535, Fisher was led from the Tower of London to Tower Hill, which was a short walk away. This was a site where many people were beheaded during the reign of King Henry VIII, and on the short journey and short walk, he prayed the entire time, and when he came to the stairs of the scaffold, he was offered a hand up, but he refused. Fisher then went up the stairs, but as he climbed, the sun shone in his face. It was roughly ten o'clock, and the executioner was ready to perform his bloody job. It was said of that day, the executioner kneeled down to him, as the fashion was, and asked him forgiveness. I forgive thee, said he, with all my heart, and I trust thou shalt see me overcome this storm lustily. Then his gown and tippet were taken from him, and he stood in his doublé and hose in front of the people. Whereof here was no such number assembled to see the execution. Fisher was then stripped for his execution, and was incredibly emaciated, which shocked the crowd, and it showed how horrible conditions were that he was kept inside of the tower. He stood on the scaffold and said to the crowd, Christian people, I am come hither to die, for the faith of Christ's holy Catholic Church, and I thank God, hitherto my stomach hath served me well. I beseech Almighty God, of his infinite goodness, to save the King in this realm, and that it may please him to hold his holy hand over it, and send the King a good counsel. It was noted that he seemed positive and spoke with courage, and he was relieved that his imprisonment would not continue. Following this he fell to his knees and prayed once more, and then the executioner came to Fisher and placed a handkerchief around his eyes. Fisher then lifted his hands and heart to heaven and said some more prayers, and then he laid his head on the little block. The executioner stood there with his sharp and heavy axe. In one swift blow he cut the head of Bishop John Fisher off, and it was said his neck bled greatly, and there was a huge amount of blood which shocked the crowd. But following his death... Henry VIII treated his remains awfully. His body was stripped and left on the scaffold for hours, until the evening. It was then taken on pikes and thrown naked into a rough grave in a nearby churchyard. Fisher's head was then placed on London Bridge, and it was said it looked lifelike weeks after. But then it was thrown into the River Thames two weeks later, to make way for that of Thomas More's decapitated head. His body was then placed inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, at the Tower of London later. Bishop John Fisher died a man of his conscience, and a man of great faith. He believed that he was doing the right thing, and he supported Catherine of Aragon, which grossly offended the king, and his enemy in Henry VIII, who was one who would not hesitate to order his brutal execution. History's most famous and notorious king would order Fisher's brutal execution, and because of this, he sent a strong message to those of England. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.